I have good news, folks. We are winning the messaging war. The carnivore diet has gone mainstream, and that is good news indeed. Demand for worldwide beef has been on the rise in recent years, and that is good news. You probably noticed that there are quite a lot of people in this world who are trying desperately to get us to not eat beef, telling us that it's bad for us or bad for this rock we're living on, or that it's apparently immoral to eat beef. It's nonsense, but that is what we keep hearing. We're supposed to eat tofu most of the time, drink seed oils with a smile on our face, and just embrace processed foods and some of the nastiest ideas ever. But despite all of that weird messaging, beef, demand for beef, is on the rise. And that's a good thing, because beef is a superfood. It is a superfood when any other things we're told are superfoods usually aren't. So let's get o go over this story because today, people like you and me love our beef and they are demanding more of it. And we know that the best way to bring the cost of beef down and to promote human health worldwide is to create enough demand for beef that the market responds to meet that demand. There are a few stories all showing this trend. Here's the first that I'll touch on in brief from nationalhogfarmer.com, a U.S. beef meat industry news outlet that typically focuses on pork news. Headline, demand for U.S. beef soars, pork exports improve. Look, worldwide demand for American beef has increased, showing a trend towards an increase around the world of the best and most nutritious food on the planet, beef. And that's good news. From the article, quote, U.S. beef exports soared to another new value record in March, according to data released by the USDA and compiled by the U.S. Meat Export Federation. March pork exports were the largest so far this year, but well below the record large totals posted in March 2021. Lamb exports continued to gain momentum in March, reaching the third largest monthly volume on record and the highest volume in nearly eight years. Fueled by mainstay markets, Beef exports totaled 126,285 metric tons in March, up 1% from a year ago, and the third largest on record, while value climbed 33% to a record 1.07 billion U.S. dollars. First quarter exports increased 6%, the 353,852 metric tons, valued at just over 3 billion U.S. dollars, up 41%. Global demand for U.S. beef has eclipsed anything I have seen in many years in the meat business, says U.S. MEF President and CEO Dan Hallstrom. While this momentum is fueled by mainstay markets such as South Korea, Japan, and Taiwan, demand is also very strong in China and Hong Kong in key Latin American markets, while exports to the Middle East have rebounded impressively, end quote. Beef, lamb, and pork exports are all up. While the typical pork from the grocery store is definitely something that should be eaten only once in a while, you get a hankering for some pork ribs once in a while, it's fine, but that stuff should probably be kept, you know, as a once in a while thing, given it's low quality and it's poor fatty acid profile compared to beef. If you're going to eat pork, stick to heritage breeds like Iberico and Berkshire and a few others. But overall, the increase for demand in beef and lamb around the world is a good thing, and frankly, I'd rather people ate a lot of grocery store quality pork than processed foods anyway. And there's a bigger thing going on here. It means that the anti-meat propaganda promoted by some seriously misanthropic figures out there with far too much influence has totally failed on the global stage. We are being constantly bombarded with stupid and evil messaging about how we should just embrace plant proteins and insects and the rest of it. But around the world, everyday people like you and I have spoken and beef is what's for dinner. And lamb and pork and all those that are far, far superior to plant-based pro proteins and the program pushed by the influencers. You have to have seen it in real time, too. You probably have been to the store and seen that that plant-based jerky that Walmart and Costco are now selling. It's nasty-looking stuff. I've never seen those shelves empty. I've never seen it look like anybody's actually buying that stuff. If you actually work at a Walmart or have or you've, if you've seen people buy it, let me know in the comments. I've never seen that stuff sell. Those shelves with that stuff are always full, like the meat substitutes in the meat aisle. Again, not a lot of demand for them unless you're living in some you know, parts of the country where culturally, culturally there's going to be more veganism and vegetarianism, like in Portland or San Francisco or someplace like that. 
The frozen food section is now featuring classic style TV dinners made with fake meat as well. And by fake meat, I mean like beyond and impossible and all that junk. And they're packaged in ways to get the shopper who isn't paying very close attention to buy those products instead of ones with real chicken or beef. It's clearly a program that someone's pushing for no good reason. Now, another good sign is that despite younger people being told to stop eating meat with an even more relentless push than the rest of us are being told that nonsense, the propaganda isn't working. From agweb.com, we get this story with this headline. Good news, millennials still love to eat meat. Sometimes with these stories, I wonder if the writer uses the term millennial to cover everyone and anyone under 40 because they often toss the term millennial around to talk about people who are in their 30s at this point when most millennials, yeah, they are in their 30s. They're not the people they're usually talking about. We're talking about college age people is, when they're, is, who, is who they're typically talking about here. Be that as it may, all the signs are that they still love to eat meat with the rest of us, which means meat market demands will continue to push cattlemen to find ways to increase their production. We'll get to that in a moment. From the article, quote, Glenn Tonsor, an economist with Kansas State University, along with Purdue University's Jason Lusk, recently released a report called Meat Demand Outdoes Meat Avoidance. The economists found even with the push to plant-based foods, U.S. consumers have a growing hunger for meat. Three-fourths of the U.S. public is still what I'd call a regular meat consumer, says Tonsor. That's where our domestic robust meat demand is coming from. The remaining one-fourth is either a flexitarian or a vegan or vegetarian. While there is ongoing buzz about more people opting for less meat, the data tells a different story. Tonsor and Lusk found in 2021, Americans wanted to consume 31% more beef, 24% more pork, and 40% more chicken than they did two decades prior. It's not surprising we have that diversity, says Tonsor. You can have strong national meat demand and also have a growing number that are looking for something different. I think that's exactly what we've got going on. One of the largest groups of meat eaters, millennials. If you were to read the headlines, they talked about millennials as the group that is most open to alternative proteins and other things. And that's probably true, but they're also the group that eats meat at the highest rate of any category or generation, says Jack Bobo, Director of Global Food and Water Policy for the Nature Conservancy. Those two things can be true at the same time. They're open to all alternatives, and they like the products that are available. Bobo says the biggest mistake is telling consumers what they shouldn't eat. Instead, he suggests the meat industry take a different approach, end quote. They include this graph that shows over the last 20 years, meat demand has increased, especially over the last decade. And I'll point something out here. The messaging that we should stop eating meat got relentless at the time on that graph that shows when meat demand started to sharply increase. The lesson here should be for anyone paying attention is to stop telling us to not eat meat. That's just not going to work. And we know for a number of reasons why that won't work. Humans are meat eating creatures by design. That's what our primary food source should be and should have been all throughout history. We can quibble over a few extra food items if we want, but the vast, vast majority of our food energy should have come from meat. And we instinctively know that. Meat is food for humans, especially the big ruminant animals. That's why red meat is probably the most hyper palatable of all unprocessed foods. We want meat on a deep DNA level. And the best part about this is, well, this, the carnivore diet has gone mainstream. Regular opinion making news outlets are reporting on the diet in ways that aren't completely hostile to it. Now, there's a little bit of counter signaling here in what I'm going to show you, but that's to be expected at this stage of things. But the tide is turning in our favor. This comes from insider.com, who has this headline Forget keto. The carnivore diet is the next big thing for people looking to cut out carbs and processed foods. No one knows the long term health outcomes. <laughs> what they don't tell you is that. We don't know the long-term health outcomes for pretty much any diet that people go on because to find out what the long-term health outcomes are, you need a long-term study where you strictly control the food people eat, which would require isolating them. And that would never be a study that could be ethically done, not in a modern laboratory or university research environment setting. And I know because I've done research in those settings, you can't get away with that. No human subjects research board would ever approve something like that. The only diet we know the long-term effect of is the standard American diet. We know that one because we can just see the health effects on the population of everyone around us in the Western world. And the effects are frankly not good in the slightest. From the article, quote, 
People who follow the diet eat mostly animal products, no grain or vegetables, no processed foods, and no added sugars. Some dieters include dairy, honey, and fruit, while others are strictly meat, salt, and water. While there's little published evidence on the carnivore diet, advocates say they've lost weight after years of failed dieting, managed chronic health issues, and restored energy, according to a 2021 survey, end quote. Now, that story goes on to tell us that fiber is such an essential nu nutrient, which is nonsense on stilts, and they even quote a hack like Wayne Norton, who knows nothing about proper human tr nutrition. Look, all your carnivore influencers online, the physicians included by their own admission, had to teach themselves what proper human nutrition is, since the mainstream view of nutrition is absurd and stupid, and they all know more than Lane Norton does, and that's because they were self-taught. All of these stories point to one thing. Demand for beef has gone up. That is part of the reason beef prices are increasing. From time to time, I like to cover why beef prices are soaring, and demand is certainly one of them. We also have news that the U.S. beef industry is going to build another major processing center, which will allow cattle producers to produce more beef for processing, which should help being, bring the price of beef down overall. But that takes time. You have to, you know, grow a cow, and that does not happen immediately. But I'm curious what you think about all this broader story. Is the carnivore diet going mainstream good news? Is it happening just in time to help counter this bigger anti-meat narrative? Or are we going to see some truly stupid processed foods hitting the shelves that are marked as carnivore, but really aren't, and should be avoided except when absolutely necessary. Is demand for U.S. beef and lamb going up a good thing, or will we see greater pressure on the market that will lead to price increases in the near future? And is the anti-meat propaganda dead and its promoters just haven't figured it out yet? Let me know in the comments, please, if like and subscribe and share this video if you, ha if you can, it really does help. And go out and optimize your health today.